Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnus, speaking to Audrey Whitby about season two of In the Vault, premiering on Crackle August 18th. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. I'm just so excited to be here and um, talk in the vault. Absolutely. It's interesting because there's a lot of genre bending, I feel like, happening with this series. Because, you know, you have the murder, you have the thriller, you have the mystery, the drama. Um, There's an appetite for a lot of that stuff right now. You see the, the big power of true crime podcasts and everything. What's it like working on a series at a time where there is a real appeal for that genre specifically? Well, for me, specifically as a true crime fanatic fan, anything that's on Netflix or, you know, My Favorite Murders, my absolute favorite podcast, um, it's kind of a dream come true to be a part of such a fun whodunit, right? Yes. It, and the who the whodunit is is always going to be, like, I'm in, you know what I mean? You find it over the whodunit, I'm always going to be in, you know what I mean? <laughs> And I think the show is so good mm -hmm. at making you question um, each character's motives and their secrets. Like it, each of them has like a truly believable motive. And I think that that makes it all the more interesting because, you know, there's just so much talk over, you know, it's the best when you can like gather your friends around and really have a debate over who you think the killer is. I mean, that's what me and my friends do anyway. So to be actually a part of this cast has been like, like I said, a total dream come true. I mean, it's one of those things too. I mean, season one does really well on Crackle, you know, millions of views and everything. Then you guys find out you're making a second season. What's the mindset knowing you're going to make another like season of this stuff? Well, yeah, I know. I was so excited when, um, you know, our creator reached out and said, we're the most watched new show on Crackle. I was just so excited that people got to really, you know, see the show finally and enjoy it. So um, we had such a blast filming season one in Utah. So when we found out that we were going to be able to all come back and be together for season two, which we filmed in Portland, it was so exciting. It was like, it's like summer camp. Every time we're all together, we're all just really close and have a really good time together. So, I mean, it's so funny because we go from like laughing and hanging out and then action and it's like, we're crying and fighting and quite literally killing each other, so. Yeah, pretty much. That's literally, that sounds <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> it's, it's a fun job. It's an interesting career path. I have friends that are on shows and it's the same thing. It's like really intense, supernatural. And then yeah. it's like, all right, cut. And then it's like, okay, what are we gonna get for lunch? Oh my God. <laughs> Exactly. It's like, what are we doing at the hotel later on? Are we going to hang out? Um, yeah. And so I just feel really thankful to, you know, have the cast I did, you know, like Jack Bernard is, oh, he's amazing. I love him so much. Um, whenever I'm in New York, I'm like, I have to see him. And, you know, we have, you know, Caleb Castile is so great. And we have Taylor Gray and just a lot of great people who are involved with the show. And I just feel lucky to know all of them. You look at, you know, we were talking about like true crime and podcast is different because you're just listening. But for, you know, the who done it for like the TV show or the movie, I'm just curious what kind of audience member you were you were hoping you're going to get with within the vault. Because I feel like there's the person that just watches just passively while they're eating pizza and everything. But then you also have like the detective at work watching it <laughs> that's like really like doesn't want to miss anything was like dialed in do you want a little Got bit of both? whiteboard up yeah, and, yeah. you know taking notes um do you want a little know, bit of both do you feel like from the audience i really hope that we can appeal to every demographic yeah. what i really hope is that we can have you know people all you know families ages different all gather around and be entertained and i think that that's what's so great about a show like in the vault is the dialogue that it starts because even if you've got like maybe not kids but if you're like teenagers and you've yeah. got mom and dad i hope it's interesting enough to where dad has an opinion mom has an opinion kids have an opinion, <laughs> teens have an opinion and they can all kind of debate together and um yeah, that's I just hope it reaches everybody, whether you're watching it while also watching TikTok or whether you totally have, you know, your notes app open and you're like listening to every word. I'm just thankful that people watch. I, I watch things both ways. So oh, it absolutely. It, 
you know, is it refreshing for you, though, as a storyteller, Audrey, to kind of, you know, you worked a lot in kind of the sitcom and the comedy, and then to work on this is another level and a different kind of vibe and everything. Is it all storytelling, or is the mindset change a little bit? <laughs> it was definitely <laughs> nerve-wracking. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm, I used to call myself the professional idiot, you know, I come from sketch comedy and sitcom. And so I was a little bit intimidated because, you know, the show is supposed to be a little sexy. It's supposed to be, it was originally called, I, I don't know if I should say this, but little fun fact, it was originally called student body. And I was like, oh God, um, you know, I'm not sure if Cherry from the Thundermans is cut out for this, but, you know, Ben, our creator, um, and Charles Hood, our director, you know, they were just so great, Ben Epstein, um, at making me feel comfortable. And yeah, at the end of the day, I think I found a way to almost bring myself into Jane and mm -hmm. her character and use that insecurity to kind of... Um, uh, be Jane because Jane is naturally a little bit insecure. I mean, it's her first time at college, right? And so I felt the same way. It was like almost my first time at college and, you know, trying something new and putting myself out there in a brand yeah, new way. Yeah, you're like the new kid at the thriller school coming from the school of like family sitcoms and comedy and sketch. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, one minute I'm Paramount just on Paramount being, you know, basically Kimmy Gibbler and the next it's like I'm Jane. <laughs> So I just think, you know, it's very similar, but I um, just, yeah, I really found a way to harness <laughs> that chaotic, insecure energy and put it into Jane because that's kind of where she was existing anyway. So um, I definitely got a couple notes, you know, to turn so it down. You did so, so you did so random, then Thundermans was after so random. Yes. And did you see, I'm just curious because, you know, I've interviewed a lot of people like yourself and Taylor Gray, who you mentioned, who started on like the first kind of bigger projects were Disney Channel and Nickelodeon. And I'm just curious when you were working on So Random, maybe Thundermans was a little different because your character had a lot of, there was a lot happening with your character and everything. Did you see it as like a stepping stone or did you just see it at the time as, hey, I'm working? You know what I mean? Or did you see it as both? Oh, no. I mean, it, I was so lucky because the same exact crew that did um, so ra I did so random with, I did all four seasons of the Thundermans with. And yes. so I kind of grew up with those people. So definitely not a stepping stone. You know, I'm a proud Kimmy Gibbler, proud sitcom girl. I still watch sitcoms. I, it's I'm very, like I said, chaotic. I'm going back and forth between like murder and then, mm -hmm. you know, sitcom so many good so, sitcoms so many i'm an all or nothing kind of person so um <laughs> definitely not a stepping stone i i loved my time there i love yeah. people with kira kosserin is still like one of my best friends i think she's an absolutely amazing person and i just yeah i'm very grateful for my time on disney and nick and then you know it also my time on so random really helped be um a catalyst into the show that um i wrote on with my sister called betch which um, you can find around town, Bet where Betches and Sketches, Betches Sketch Show. And so I was kind of able to hone my sketch abilities to then write, um, I think we did seven seasons of Betch. So, you yeah. know, it, it, I'm really grateful for all the experiences I, I've had. I feel like the learning experiences are just going to kind of happen. You're going to do, like like you said, you're going to do many seasons of the Thundermans. <laughs> you're just kind of like, you sit and be like, wow, like, I actually, like, there's so many things I did not know about until now because of the Thundermans. I feel like you don't really think about them, but there are a lot of learning experiences. Yeah, I always say, like, I'm that one girl from that one thing. Um, and I and I'm totally don't mind. Everybody who uh, recognizes me always comes up uh, with, you know, something different. You know, it's either you're from Austin and Alley or it could be, you know, like, oh, you're from in the vault. And so it's fun to see, you know, what age range, what kind of people recognize me from what, because I truly have done a lot of random stuff. Yeah. I always feel like Thundermans is always a show that always gets brought up a little bit too, because I'm sure you and the cast talked about this because it was really in a lot of ways. I mean, I think, was that 2015, the first season of Thundermans around that? Yeah, I think that was, was like right before the super big superhero geek culture boom. You guys were like right on top of that wave, right? Before it like really hit. 
<laughs> yes, I, I, our creator Jed is was so smart to kind of hop on that trend, and then you know Henry Danger came directly after, and that's also such a great show. Yeah, um, yeah, it was so fun, and I mean, it, it really was. Yeah, 2014, 2015. I remember we shot the pilot on Kira's 14th birthday. That was, and now it's like, oh, we're we're so off. Um, I but know it's been, it was a lot. 2014 I'm, was I, a long time ago. <laughs> and, for somebody, even though Cherry didn't have any superpowers, um, you know, I really got to do, I still got included in on the fun. You know, I, I've levitated, I I flew, I was I was frozen. Um, so yeah, I think even though I myself didn't get to have superpowers, I, I still got to do a lot of cool, fun stunts. And I got to wear the super suit one uh, episode. I think that's one of my favorite episodes when Cherry decides to... Uh, be Phoebe for the day. Um, so yeah, I just, it was such a good time. Absolutely. Before we wrap up getting back to In the Vault for a second, when they get a chance to watch season one and two on, on Crackle, season two is premiering on August 18th. What are you hoping they get out of it takeaway wise, Audrey, with In the Vault? Well, okay. So I hope everybody goes to Crackle and binges or catches up on season one now because you're going to need all that good information as we go into season two. And um, I hope people just realize the hard work that was put into the show. You know, everybody who was involved was really dedicated and excited and happy to be there. And, you know, it's not always that's not always the case when you're on set that everybody's, you know, very invested. And so, yeah, I just really hope that people realize how fun it is um, and how much fun we had doing it, even though, um, you know, murder isn't always supposed to be fun. It still is a good time. And so I really hope the fans, like I said, I really hope that when people watch it, it sparks debate. And um, yeah, that's, that's it. Absolutely. No, and it's, it's right, right around the corner, I guess. A couple of so weeks. Great. Yeah, is... and we're so grateful to Crackle. Um, yeah, that we're the number one most watched new show on crackle so i'm just grateful for that that people are watching it and appreciating it and mm. you know yeah and crackle is fun to say isn't it crackle, <laughs> crackle. <laughs> what does she say that's that mean girls quote say crack one more time. say crack it crack <laughs> <laughs> classic also thank you so much for your time it was so great chatting with you it's so nice to chat with you too i'm so happy to be here absolutely so like we said crackle season two um august 18th in the vault mm -hmm. um there's an instagram account right people can keep up date with you specifically uh, at yeah at audrey whitby pretty creative i know um yeah so follow me on instagram and i just um our exclusive season two trailer just uh dropped on downright creepy mm -hmm. and so the link is currently in my story um well right now i don't know when this one but yeah so <laughs> 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 downright creepy season two trailer just dropped um it's super exciting so amazing well this has been pop turn of youtube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes season two of in the vault premiering on crackle august 18th until next time this is audrey whitby and pd beats signing off thank you for tuning in to pop turnative make sure to check out our past episodes of pop turnative on youtube be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.